Benjamin Franklin, there are two certainties in life, death and taxes. This means that in every person's life, only two things must occur. They will die, and until then, they will have to pay taxes. Everything else is only a possibility. Who has heard the phrase, there are some things you just have to do? Now, I have heard this phrase many times, but it seems a little bit contradictory to what Benjamin Franklin is saying. And of course, not even taxes and death will be necessary. We have tax evaders, people who live off the grid, churches, none of which pay taxes. And when it comes to death, some studies say that we will all be immortal cyborgs by the year 2045. Now, today, we will be going over quitting. This paradox between persistence and pushing through and stopping when it gets to be too much. We will discuss what it, quitting is like in modern society, how it is viewed. I will share my personal experience of quitting, and we will look at the benefits of quitting. <coughs> so, to begin, we need to take a deeper look into what quitting is. And to do this, we will first glance at its antithesis, which is persistence. Now, it's a well-known fact that in the general population of America, many people value grit and perseverance and the ability to push through failure and not succumb to defeat. This ability to push through and not accept failure is seen as a necessary trait, and those who don't have it are seen as cowardly, or dispassionate, or just lazy. Quitting has the connotation of being something that is very upsettingly negative. It is giving up. It is, it is letting yourself fail. But that's not quite the case. According to the English Oxford Dictionary, the term quit, as we use it here in America, is actually the informal use of the word, and that it's American by nature. The actual word means to leave a place, uh, usually permanently. However, for our purposes, we're going to ignore the actual definition, which is okay, because the English Oxford Dictionary uh, doesn't matter, no one cares about it, and the far superior uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that our definition is right at the top. Now you may have noticed that the Merriam-Webster gives us the idea of quitting and giving up as synonymous, and I want to challenge that. Although we use it this way in America, let's redefine it. I remember being in eighth grade art class, and I was really, really bad at art. But I always put my best foot forward although I was a little bit of a perfectionist, and this caused me great stress later on. Towards the end of the year, we had an animation project. We would draw little pictures on each page of a booklet of sticky notes, and then as we flipped through them, it would become animated. I clearly remember that everything I tried did not work. Everything I tried failed. And as the due date came up, the stress built and built and built. And it got to the point where I was crying at one o'clock in the morning the night before the project. Of course, this is because I had absolutely no emotional intelligence at that age, and I refused to do anything less than perfect. But it illustrates a point that I didn't give up. I kept pushing and pushing. The next day, I brought all that I could muster to class. And instead of turning our projects in, we watched a movie. All of that stress and effort was a massive 
a way to fix that. As I lived my life, I learned something about myself. I learned that there are some things that I just cannot do. I don't have the mental capacity. I've learned to know when I cannot accomplish a task and when the stress is too much, the cost is too much. And I say, all right, I'm moving on. Many people will say that quitting is never an option. You cannot quit, you cannot give up, never succumb to defeat. And those people are right. You should never give up. But that does not mean you cannot make choices that better suit your needs. Mr. Nielsen has a saying, and it's echoed by psychology today. Everything you have spent time and effort on is a sunk cost. This means that you've already put the effort in, so there's no point in basing future decisions off of it. You should base your decisions only off of what is best for yourself. It's okay to quit. You're simply making the decision that suits you. And pushing through has cost. It takes a lot of willpower and energy and endurance to persevere. And sometimes that cost gets to be too much and it can become harmful. Quitting and its consequences also have a cost. And sometimes that is very negative. Those tax evaders were probably in prison. But sometimes that cost of the consequence is less than the cost of accomplishing the task. And that is when it is time to quit. Quitting is about knowing your limitations and weighing the consequences. Today, we looked at what, how quitting is viewed in modern society. I shared my experience of learning to quit and looked at the benefits and how quitting can be a very healthy behavior. The next time you feel overwhelmed, consider dropping something. Consider putting it to the side. Decide if it is worth it. Weigh the consequences. And if it is, quit. But remember, always pay your taxes. You don't want to know.